I'm going to build a life-size Pokemon with 3D printing and I'm going to show you guys step by step so that you guys can build your own. So the first thing I have to look for is what Pokemon should I 3D print? I just want to look for a Pokemon that is my favorite and that will look good in my room. So I found a Pokemon that I want to build and it is Charmander. Because I found my favorite Pokemon, I'm going to go look for the STL file and try to get it printed right away. After you download the STL file, the software I like to use is called Mesh Mixer. And with Mesh Mixer, I split Charmander into pieces. So upload it to your printer and you're set to go. Alright, so it's been a couple hours and some of them are almost done. Alright, so it's next morning. The next thing to do is actually sand them. If you guys are wondering what I've been using in a video, I use this um, nail dust collector to collect all the dust I get from sanding. Does it help? Eh. But other than that, it takes some time, but once you rough it out and sand it, the next thing you gotta do is putty. The things that I use is called Plasti Plastic Wood X. I use this to coat the figurines. I did put a little bit of water in here, so one next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swish it around, try to get as much stuff in there. It's like clay, you know? It's all set and ready. Uh, the more water you put in, the thinner it gets, which is fine. Just uh, make sure that it has a slight thickness to it. You can grab a brush, doesn't matter what it is. Just grab any brush. What you wanna do is you're gonna paint it all over it. You know, get it all soaked. So, the secret to actually drying this is a blow dryer. As long as you put it in low heat and you actually blow it from a distance, you should be fine. But that's the fastest way, in my personal opinion, to drying. Uh, sometimes I sit there for like an hour at least of just drying them just to make sure. It sometimes takes like 30 minutes depending on how big the piece is. But you just want to stay there and make sure you get a good distance and just dry it from a far distance. And uh, yeah, it won't be too bad. All right, so I got the putty dried up. Next thing I gotta do is sand it with a 220 grit sanding paper. Primer. We're gonna be priming our figurines and spraying it all over. So I'm gonna show you guys, it's a two-in-one filler and sandable. Basically, this helps a lot with filling in gaps or little cracks inside the figurine. This is the one that you gotta get. Before you start spraying, the most important thing that I like to do, I like to leave it in hot water for like 20 to 30 minutes. This helps with thinning out the paint so that when you do start spraying, it'll come out smoothly. After you spray everything and let it dry, it's now ready to be glued on. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can pick this up in Walmart or uh, Home Depot too if you have to. It's important that you have to know how to use it because uh, it glues really fast and it gets stuck on pretty good so if you don't glue it right at the first try you're gonna ruin your 3d print and that's gonna suck if you like to kind of like positioning it and maybe it's like probably your first time i highly recommend using um glue like these the next step is actually trying to putty this line and um, there's some like big open gaps like this because my 3D printer is being weird and didn't flatten out. But this is not really a big deal because what I usually do is I stuff it with like uh, putty. And then um, once I stuff with putty, I kind of smooth it out by sanding. All right, so same thing, right? We're gonna be using putty. So I already mixed them up already. It's a little bit more pink than usual, but that's fine. I kind of wanted it to be thick a tiny bit. First thing I'm gonna start out with is 120 grit sandpaper. Don't start out with 220 because uh, it's gonna take a long time. Especially if you leave it out for a long period of time. It's gonna start taking quite a long time if you just do 220 grits only. So make sure you do 120 grit first. And then once you get towards kind of like the even part of the layers, then you can start using a 220. All right, so same thing, right? We're just gonna be doing the exact same thing like what we did before, except we're gonna be using primer. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand, we're gonna basically spray paint it all, prime it all the pieces. And then once we prime it, we're gonna check if there's any cracks. And then that's where we re-putty it and make sure that we have to sand it again and then prime it again. So this is just a repeat process. And uh, the more you repeat it, the, the less lines you'll see. I'm back at home base and I what I did was I putty it, I put some more putty on and uh, it's already dried up already so I'm gonna have to sand it today. But as you can tell, sometimes like, you know, you gotta put a little bit more putty, which is fine. Uh, it's, like I said, it's a rinse and repeat project. So same thing, putty, then sand again. All right, so now that you got everything set up, the next thing to do is actually start painting. And yes, I know the camera is not really high enough, but it's a very easy color. I think he only has like three to four colors that I have to worry about, which is white, black, white, and a little bit of orange and yellow. So it won't be too bad of paint. And uh, the only color I use, the only thing type of paint I use is acrylics. I mix this, so I usually mix this with water. And what I do is, I, how do I say? I, I make sure that it has more water than acrylics because. Uh, I don't like leaving like paint streaks and um, paint streaks is the worst thing because you can't get rid of it. So um, I'm probably gonna have to do like four coats at least or three to four coats and uh, that should be plenty. It's gonna look faded at first, but the more coat you put on, the better. When I lift it up, this is how I can tell. So you can tell it's like very wet. Usually you can count the drips if there's like, like that. That's like, that's like a plenty of water in there. And so there you go. So finished product finally took like, it took me like two to three weeks to finish this. And uh, this is a life-size Charmander and I did this with 3D printing. Um, yeah, so if, you're, if you were doing this, you could probably do a lot better than I did because I kind of like, I didn't do so well. Um, if I really wanted to make it look better, I probably would have taken my more. I would probably would have taken more time on doing the putty, and a lot more sanding. And uh, not only that, but I didn't get to put a finishing gloss on it yet. I do want to do that, but I kind of just want to show you guys what it looks like uh, for a flat color and not like a shiny color. But other than that, I hope this video has helped you guys in learning how the whole process looks. Um, uh, this is my process. A lot of other people have different processes on how they do it. Um, I'm still figuring things out. I only started like six or seven months ago. So there's a lot of things I'm still learning on how to, on what to do and how to fix my mistakes. If you guys really like this type of videos, I can do more of it. Um, I do this a lot. I make a lot of stuff for a lot of people and I want to share my passion with you guys. So thank you for watching and I'll hope to see you guys next time.